Welcome back to Boston at IBM Think 2024. We're here inside the IBM Cube, the SiliconANGLE Cube. Really excited to have a discussion about IBM automation. So much going on in that space. Ajay Patel is here. He's the general manager of Aptio IBM and Bill Lobig, the vice president of product management for IBM Automation. Guys, thanks for coming inside thanks. the Cube. Thanks, Appreciate David. it. Thanks for having thanks us. Thanks yep. for building this set. Okay, a lot of confusion out there. What is inside IBM's automation portfolio, Bill. Can you just break it down for us? Yeah, so IBM Automation is a set of technologies and solutions uh, that help you do several things. Optimize the value you get from your IT investments, and then manage the performance and health of those investments over time across networking, IT operations, cost value management, and it's all optimized for IBM's hybrid cloud strategy. So, the whole FinOps topic took off you know, a couple of years ago. Uh, what catalyzed that? Was it just people realizing, well, maybe we over-rotated on, on cloud, or, you know, we can't predict the cost, or, or, you know, maybe it was a little economic pressure, why? I, I think if you see the last couple of years with COVID, the momentum of public cloud just picked up. Right. But along with that, cost picked up. Yes. Now we're in that mode where cost is becoming a major constraint. Like IT budgets are competing for AI projects and everything else are keeping the lights on. And so the practice by how you get control of your costs is becoming critical. And so FinOps almost has a grassroots effort. Uh, Cloud, uh, Aptio was one of the founding members of, uh, of FinOps. If, I don't even knew that. Uh, <laughs> GR was part of the Cloudability team that started this. I did not uh, know that actually. Yeah, so over the years what's happened is it's really become a community effort. Now almost I think 47 of the 50, Fortune 50, are on the FinOps uh, community. And we have a groundswell of practitioners who are looking to see how do we bring the financial discipline to how do you manage cost? How do you move from being kind of an esoteric approach to making it pervasive for developers to participate so that they are yes. cost aware in all the businesses? So you're talking about operationalizing it exactly. essentially. Yeah. Yep. And then where does, where does Watson X fit into this? Because you know, a lot of people say, well, isn't AI going to do that? Well, AI is just, it seems like magic, but it's not that easy. I think we're a great example of an applied AI use case. We're applying AI to our products to make them better. I give you a few quick examples, but we're also we also see AI and the investments in it as a natural extension of what we do today, which is we allow you to map the ROI and the value of your IT spend, and AI is just another one of those spends. So we see great opportunity there to bring at TCO and the cost and value of AI. If you look at how much money is being spent, the valuation of Nvidia and et cetera. It's not entirely obvious to me what the ROI that's being seen on the other end of that is, and that's, that's what we do. We're well, also leveraging AI to make it easier to interact with our tools, you can ask questions versus having to look things up, and generally improve the experience and make it more frictionless. Well, you, you mentioned that. I mean, there are some similar patterns emerging in the, the AI wave that- The cloud wave. You know, we lived through the dot com. There's a lot of differences, but there are some similarities in that you have this sort of small insulated ecosystem buying GPUs, then people spending money to train those GPUs is very you know, circular. And then you know, some singles being hit in the enterprise AI. Now, <clears throat> big differences too. I mean, the CapEx is coming off the balance sheet, not from debt, from places like Enron and Global Crossing, but, but we keep an eye on that. Um, but uh, uh, can you address the TAM? Yes, for, for <laughs> so this space. We often get categorized into what we call the ITOM market, mm -hmm. IT operations management market. Right. That market's very broad, but in specific, when I call the service addressable market that we focus on, we focus on kind of three distinct market segments. IT financial management, how are you managing your technology costs and spending? Doesn't matter where, right? Whether it's people, resources, infrastructure, applications, you know, software from IBM and others. Uh, second one is the whole cloud cost, infrastructure now being bought through the cloud, often called cloud cost management, a CCMO as a market. And third one is observability. How do you observe and optimize what's going on in the infrastructure and the application? Those are three markets we play in, and this is a multi-billion dollar market, anywhere from 10 to 12 billion, as you and I were talking about earlier. Yeah, so I wonder if you could talk about IBM Concert a little bit. I've been reading about that announcement. It looks like you know, pretty comprehensive. Um, why don't you set it up, what is it? Yeah. And then I have another follow up. So if you think about IBM, we're a platform company. And you know us for hybrid cloud, and OpenShift is kind of the solution for hybrid cloud. Mm -hmm. 
When you think about AI, you have watched the next. Given the breadth of the automation, automation portfolio and the complexity in how they all need to come together and break the silos, it was important for us to start painting a vision and a brand that brought all our capabilities together. So at the very top, think of Concert as the third platform for automation that IBM's building. Now let's unpack that, what does that mean? It doesn't mean we're gonna now go build and build this unified singular platform in a capital P platform. We're gonna take best of breed solutions in the three markets I talked about, but bring them together using an insights and action framework, using Watson X as the underlying Gen AI technology to stitch together these three domains for use cases where we provide rich context for specific use cases for specific users. Whether you're a finance user, you're a CIO, you're a DevOps engineer, an SRE, or an operator, you have specific use cases you're trying to solve for. Each of the solutions publishes data to an insights and an AI platform, but is also a customer off of it as well. Yes. And the piece that stitches it all together is Concert. So Concert is the next generation management platform that brings best of breed solutions that's AI enabled and has an AI enabled action framework. So is Concert the umbrella and something like Cloud Pack for AI ops? Those just fit it's into in capabilities into oh, the yes. Concert solution. I see. Yes, it brings it all together. Uh, the way I also think about it is applications are supported by many tools. No single tool supports an application. And how do you break down the barriers and as Ajay mentioned, the silos to get contextual insights and actions at an application-centric level Correct. and do that in a platform in a cohesive way. That's what we're focused on, that's what Concert is. Is there a use case in your world around application rationalization? There's been a huge explosion of applications. Uh, and we go through these cycles, Y2K, explosion yeah. of apps, and then you know, post 9-11, big rationalization exercise. Financial crisis, big opportunity. COVID, you didn't have time, because you, so you, you, you were yeah. forced to digital, <laughs> right? So now you have more apps supporting remote workers. Does AI provide an opportunity to do a, a, a portfolio rationalization, and do you guys fit in that? You no, know, absolutely. So if you start at the very top, the first question I often ask a CIO is, do you know where your money is going? Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, fair question. So the first question really is how do we quickly discover where all my money is being spent and for what tools portfolio? We call it portfolio management. So AI enables you to do automated discovery correlation because just knowing where you're spending the money, but how do you link it to the applications and the business value generate? How do you make decisions on kill this app, invest more in this app? This yes. is the kind of stuff AI will enable. Allow you to start, understand your complex environment, link it to business value, start to decision provide you insights on how do you stack up against your competitors? Where are opportunities for scale? Where should you invest? What's the ROI or TCO for the solution? We're using Gen AI and AI capability to bring that intelligence so you can start making those good business decisions. So, let's unpack that because I understand how you can provide visibility mm -hmm. on the, the, the application estate, you know, who's using what, how it ties to business process, which mm -hmm. is critical. You got IT infrastructure, you got the apps on top, you got business process, you have multiple processes using yep. apps and a lot of dependencies. How do you connect it to value? Do you look at usage? You know, this gets yeah. very political. There's oh, a P&L manager says, <laughs> that's my app, even though there's only five people using it. Yes. Right? And the CIO gets stuck paying for it. Yeah. How do you yeah. so rationalize that? I, I think it's just kind of three basic steps we start with. It starts with just cost transparency. Typical basic is show back, charge back. I start sending you a bill. Yeah. You see the bill and you go, why am I paying so much? Mm -hmm. That starts the conversation about what is driving that bill? What applications are driving the bill? What are the results of it? And we continue to unpack this so you can start to have a dialogue with business. Because business is getting the value, IT is getting the bill. How are you starting to bring those two together with a financial a savviness that a business needs to deliver value. So we're starting to provide a data-driven conversation that's links to business value. Is it a showback or a chargeback or it depends? It usually starts oh, from showback, but it eventually goes to unit economics. What's it costing me to serve that customer? I'll, I'll take my own example, right? Let's say I acquire you as a customer and you just continue to pay me 50,000 a year, but it cost me 50,000 to acquire you and cost me another 20,000 to support you. You're not a good customer. Mm -hmm. How do I know that? How do I get to economics so that I can serve you for cheap and maybe I can retain you and you're profitable? So we're starting to see product profitability. These are business conversations. Nowhere did I talk about technology or infrastructure or cloud. I started talking about 
what, what are my customers, who are my customers, what's the right customer to service, at what unit economics, what unit cost, and we work with the business to define those metrics. This is Barry Powell. What I used to do when I had a CIO consultant is we'd have to we try to get everybody in the room, right? And you would ask them questions that they really didn't know the answer to. <laughs> yes. They certainly didn't know the, the total cost of ownership and how to apply yeah. it, and they really didn't know how those apps supported revenue. That's right. You know, and there was a always a big argument of you know P and L managers. And, uh, go yeah. ahead, IT. You pay yeah. for it. You've sort of streamlined that whole process. That information. Yeah, yeah, democratizing yeah. is a good word. Because now you're taking the politics out of it. Correct. Yes. And then if, if you have to, you can escalate it with data. Correct. Yes. And then everybody says, okay, let's calm down and make good business decisions for the company. You know, but the unique part about us is with the IBM acquisition and us coming together, we would, as apt you come and tell you, here's some interesting insights. Go figure out what to do about it. Now we can automate those actions. Yes. Right? We can close the loop, see whether the results actually happen. More, many of my customers use me for budgeting and tracking and forecasting. Mm -hmm. You know, how many of us said we'll move to the cloud, we'll save money? 12 months in, our bills have gone up. <laughs> Nothing's been saved. So how do I provide visibility of, is it really going as planned? Or what value did I get or out of that? Does, out it, of it. does it warrant that? Exactly. And so that's the kind of conversation we're driving, which is why becoming so strategically important, mm -hmm. both in terms of insight, but also how do we automate the actions to drive the savings you need. Let's close with how you guys see the future of IT automation, specifically as it relates to, to Gen AI. Bill, you start. And then yeah. Close. My vision for what we're doing to bring Aptio and IBM technology together is to empower the IT organization, the S SREs, the DevOps, to be responsible stewards of the budgets that are empowered upon them and demonstrate how efficiently and productively they're doing that while maintaining the business KPIs and performance and SLAs that, that they are bestowed with. You know, I like to say that if IT's prime objective was to save costs, they would just turn everything off. Like that's ridiculous. <laughs> <It'd be> easy. <laughs> <laughs> you know, kill so, the business. So, exactly. <laughs> so their prime objective is to provide business applications that perform and generate this revenue. And by bringing Aptio together with the other technologies we have, powered by Concert, Gen AI, to bring that insights, it'll raise a level of awareness in all the constituents. And, and help it build better outcomes for you our know, customers. We were laughing about that. That's, that was one of the tricks we used to use is what happens if the application gets shut down? Right. Ah, and nobody you, screams you want it, to yeah. it, Right, exactly. Yeah. Nobody says, well, nothing. That's one really. way you to do try something it. else, it's yeah. of equal value. Yeah. All right, Ajay, bring us home. So I would walk you with two or three key points. The world is moving to more real time. Yes. The mm. world is moving away from silos to continuous delivery. And in this world of continuous delivery in real time, the world is proactive and automation. You cannot simply throw people at this problem. It's moving at the speed which you cannot control it. So we see a world where you need a management platform that's data-driven, that provides the business what they need, allows engineering to deliver effectiveness, control their cost, and operator proactively respond to incidents. All built around our AI-driven insight platform that uniquely delivers value to our customers. I, I love that vision because we see the future of applications as intelligent applications in real time. Correct. So many so many use cases in things like supply chains and logistics and, and many more uh, bringing transactions and analytics together. So you need that kind of IT automation underneath. Guys, thanks so much thanks. for yeah, coming on theCUBE. Really appreciate your thank time. You. Great. Okay, and thank you for watching this special CUBE presentation. Mm -hmm. IBM Think 2024 from Boston. We'll be right back. This is Dave Vellante.